Democracy Presents. I'm joined by an amazing guest today, violinist, producer, entrepreneur, composer, all the way from Trinidad, the amazing Andre Donawa, aka Donadoni. Sir, it's an absolute pleasure to talk to you. So how are you? I'm great. Thank you for having me. It's an absolute pleasure. How are you? Everything okay? I'm good. I'm, I'm great. I'm great. I'm great. Just, you know, trying to keep busy, you know, within the new COVID uh, regulations and so forth. You know, the, the, the paradigm of everything has changed. Of course. So, you know, have to find a new way to, to be innovative. Of course. How are you keeping busy at home? Yes, I've, I've been busy, you know, I've set up my studio at home and I've just been recording and, you know, just finding new ways to, to be creative. Amazing. I can't wait to hear what you've been working on. Could be watching some of your previous videos as well and your new, new stuff. Unbelievable. Unreal stuff. I really think it's amazing. Thank you. My pleasure. But I want to kind of, before we get into the things that you've done so far, which is amazing, by the way, I always have to take, kind of take it back and see what you've worked and how, see how you got into music. So let's think back to the beginning and sort of talk about your journey into music so far. How, how did it all start for you? Oh, it all started at a, a, very, a very tender age. You know, I was <laughs> at, the age of, at the age of five, mm -hmm. you know, I, I wanted to play the violin. Mm -hmm. You know, and I told my mom about it, you know. Yeah. People always ask me, you know, what, what, what influenced you, you know, what divine intervention came that you really wanted to play the violin at five, you know. And I always tell people it's, it's like a divine intervention because I, I can't really think of anything, one episode in my life that would have been like, okay, this is the violin is what I want to do. But it just, it just came to be, into being, you know. And um, so from the age of five, I wanted to play it. My mom thought I was, you know, joking. <laughs> three years past, I was, three years past, so I was eight, and I continued asking, and she said, okay, and she sent my first violin for me. My cousin mm -hmm. from New York sent my first violin for me at half size, mm -hmm. you know, and I started from there. I did this Trinity School of Music up to grade eight exams, you know, I did music festivals. Uh, I performed at jazz festivals in the Caribbean. I did some stuff at Washington for the uh, Embassy of Trinidad and Tobago. I performed with the, for the Queen of England when she came to Trinidad yeah. for, the, for the Summit of the Americas. <laughs> you know, so I came through the ranks of the youth orchestra. Mm -hmm. You know, so that that's basically how I, I, I you know, I got my classical training. That's yeah. unreal. Could I want to mention about the Queen after, actually? That's unbelievable. And when you first started playing violin, did you ever think that you, ha you ever had the chance to do these such incredible performances in your life? Uh, more or less, yes. You know, I, I always knew from the first time I picked up the instrument that, you know, I wanted, wanted to be a performer. I wanted to be an entertainer. Mm -hmm. You know, I always wanted to do things differently. You know, me coming from the Caribbean, mm -hmm. you know, I used our culture, you know, and, and I infused it with my classical training. Yeah. You know, hence, you know, hence the reason I created this new song, you know, of soca, classical soca violin. Yeah, that's why so, I was drawn to your music because it's so different to what people are expecting as well. That, that like you said, that soca, yeah. classical mix. How, mm -hmm. did, how did kind of people take it when you first started that mix? Did they, were people sort of instantly drawn to it or were they kind of skeptical at first? They were skeptical, you know, the, the, the staunch, you know, mm -hmm. classical uh, fraternity, you know, it was, it was almost blasphemous, yeah. you know, um, but eventually, you know, as the years progressed, there was a change, you know, and, you know, locally, it was more accepted where now the classical fraternity, mm -hmm. you know, they experiment with the, the, the Caribbean fusion. Yeah. In, in the music. So, you know, it, it, it took a while, but, you know, it's in a better place. Ah, oh, brilliant. In terms of, of that, that style of, of, of playing. Yeah, that's fantastic. And obviously, we mentioned before that you kind of produce your own stuff as well now. So is that, is that kind of your sound, that, that soccer classical mix? Is that how you would kind of describe your own sound or is it something different? Uh, yeah, more or less, but I, 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 I will more classify my music as, as, as world music, mm -hmm. you know, because I, I infuse a lot of, uh, you know, African 
Euro European, mm -hmm. you know, even Middle Eastern, uh, you know, styles in my music. Mm -hmm. You know, so, um, but me being from the Caribbean, you know, it's, it's part of my DNA. Yeah. You know, I will infuse that. Yeah. In the music. Mm. Who, who inspires you to produce and perform? Have you looked up to people growing up in terms of producing and performing or is it down to yourself to inspire yourself? Uh, more or less, I, I, I draw inspiration from myself. I, you know, I listen to different Joshua Bell. He's a mm -hmm. great performer. Mm -hmm. Hans Zimmer. My favorite. <laughs> my favorite. He's like my all time favorite composer. Uh -huh. You know, um, Sarah Chan, she's an excellent violinist. So, you know, I, I take all these influences. It's Zach Willman. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, I draw inspiration from, from them. But in terms of creating my own song, I, I, I draw that for myself. You know, I really yeah. like to dig deep within my soul and, and, and really express how I feel musically. Yeah. I, I don't like to be influenced too much while I'm creating. Of course not. But talk, talking about creating, you actually created your own quartet, didn't you? As well. Yes, I did. Yeah, yes, well, I did. Yeah, can I see the name here? Actually, it's fantastic. Let's get into that. How did that all come about for you starting your own quartet? Wow, that, that, <laughs> that, was, that was divine. Yeah. Well, basically, when I started, I started performing at 11. All right. Mm -hmm. So I always have this, this, this vision in my head that, okay, I want to be a performer. I'm seeing myself performing in front of thousands of people and so forth. So the opportunity came uh, when I was around, let's say, 24, mm -hmm. where I got invited to perform at Marshall Montano's concert. He's mm -hmm. like one of the biggest soccer stars in the, in the world. All right. If not the biggest soccer star in the world. Amazing. And um, yeah, and he, he invited me to perform at his concert. Mm -hmm. Now I met him that week by accident and <laughs> just in converse, just in conversation, mm -hmm. you know, um, <laughs> you know, I told him, hey, well, yeah, I'm a violinist. And he's like, really, you're a violinist? <laughs> I've been looking for a violinist for the past how many months? Or, okay, let's go come by, me, come by me the next day, audition. So I went by him the, the next day, the, the day after mm -hmm. audition, and he's like, okay, you're in my show. Now that show is three days three days a week wow so i had to practice an entire <laughs> repertoire for that show so performed at that show as a soloist mm -hmm. and it was a, like a huge success i was in front of like thirty thousand people wow yeah and that it was a, a great success the name of the show was uh or at the time alternative concept mm. all right so i performed at the show was it was mega yeah and um after the show immediately after the show he came to me and he's like okay this was great. Next year, I want an ensemble. I want a quartet. I want string players. I'm like, okay, cool. I didn't really <laughs> think about my career in that aspect, but it sounded, it was challenging for me, and I like challenges. So I'm mm. like, okay, cool, no problem. I got so that very week, I got together a group of players, and we literally practiced for a year <laughs> for the next show. And the next show came around, and. Um, I remember in a rehearsal, I, I told him, since your show is, is named Alternative Concept, mm -hmm. why, why don't we name our, ourselves the quartet Alternative Quartet? Mm -hmm. Because we're playing for the show Alternative Concept. Yeah. You know, you know he, he listened to me, he chuckled, but he didn't, I, I thought he didn't take it on at, at that time. But when he introduced us on stage live, he's like introducing Alternative Quartet. All right? Yes. And that was a really great show. And honestly, we didn't plan to stick, stick together for uh, after that show. It was just a pilot project for us. Mm -hmm. But after that show, phone was ringing off the hook. People wanted us to perform everywhere. You know, so even if we did not want to continue, mm -hmm. it could not have happened. You know, oh. the, the universe conspired differently, you know. And, um, and we never stopped. And that went on for about over a decade. <laughs> wow, that's incredible. Wow. Yeah. I mean, yeah. what was it like for such a quick turnaround going from talking to him to then performing to 30,000 people in a few days? I mean, 
you met, your head must have been all over the place when that was happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it was honestly like a surreal experience for me. You know, it's almost like I was dreaming. Mm. You know, but it, it also was a dream being realized for myself and the members. And you know, within that 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 journey, I learned a lot. Yeah, you know, and that ushered in the experience needed for me to now become a soloist. So that was a, a very integral part of my uh, my journey, my de my develop my musical development. Of course, that's amazing. How yeah. how long how long was the repertoire that you had to? What was the how much did you have, did you have to learn over a few days? Okay, so when I did my solo performance, I had to learn. Sure. I had to learn about nine, nine songs. Wow. <laughs> for that show. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, it, it sounds, it sounds grand. Mm -hmm. But for me personally, I really like, how should I say it? M music is an innate part of me. Mm. All right. So when I, when I was younger and I was learning the instrument, I used to, put on the radio, listen to all the songs, and try and play every single song. That's exactly every how I did it as well. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like yeah. every single song, you name it. <laughs> I would sit down in front of that radio and just be playing with it, improving my improvisational skills, my oral skill. Mm -hmm. You know, so when it came to that junction in my, in my career, I felt comfortable because it's like okay, I've been I've been preparing for moments like these. Yeah. You know. So when it came about it, it was a it was a mega task, but I was up for it. I was excited because I mean at the end of the day it's my passion. Mm. You know, and yeah. And that um, went from strength man. to strength and yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean growing up, who who did you kinda of listen to growing up actually? Who were your kind of favorite artists and songs listening when you're growing wow. up? Well, I, I have a wide repertoire when it comes to that. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> so I used to listen to a lot of classical music growing up. Mm -hmm. You know, um, the Itzhak Bermans, the, 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 the Sarah Chans, the so forth. Mm -hmm. Then I had an alternative music phase. You know, I used to listen to a lot of Google, Google Dolls and uh, yeah. Alanis <laughs> Morissette and, you know. Uh -huh. Corn rock yeah. band, you know. Uh, then I had my my two pack B days, and then mm. I had my my hardcore dance all days, and you know. So I'm I'm it's, it's a wide range. I yeah. Then I had my I did, when I did my uh my courses at university, I did Hindustani classical music. Mm -hmm. You know, I did composition in university, so I I I really have a wide range when it comes to the genres. Yeah, I, I really appreciate all genres, and I, that's why I say when I compose, mm -hmm. I try to, you know, infuse a, a worldly feel mm -hmm. in my music. Of course, music. best way to be. Yeah. That is the best way to be. And yeah. going to the uni, university, how how did you find it? Did you really enjoy it, or was it completely different to how you expected it to be? The latter. It the was latter, completely yeah. different <laughs> than I expected yeah. it to be. You know, I thought, okay, I'm gonna go to university. I'm gonna play my violin every day i'm gonna be all i can be <laughs> yeah. you know but um the program was caribbean based so we had to learn a lot of steel pan music and, mm -hmm. and stuff like that um, i kind of got disenchanted to be honest oh really but yeah but i did learn a lot of uh basic fundamentals pertaining to music mm -hmm. You know, especially uh, composition. I was in a lot of, I, I was in three composition classes. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, pan, pan composition, voice composition, and classical. Mm. So that helped me a lot with, with, with my interpretation of music and, and me creating music. Mm. So, I mean, it, it, had, it, had, it had its advantages and disadvantages for me. Of course, I can imagine. Was it, was it three years your course as well? Yeah, 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 three year yeah. course. But it kind of, I never went to university, so I, I kind of missed out on that whole period of my life. But um, I kind of I learned sort of through live by starting. I started my own orchestra. I learned sort of that way by thinking about learning 
by going into the deep end by of doing things. But of course, no. Yeah, I get you. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. get you. <laughs> but, yeah, so I. Um, sorry, 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 sorry. I, I, I keep interrupting. Sorry, go on, go on. No, no, no. You're, you're saying something. No, I was gonna say, um, like, um, after you finished uni, did you, did you really enjoy it, or was it something that you kind of wish you didn't go through in the end? No, I, I, I did. I, yeah. I. That was a phase in my life where. I started to mature, mm. you know, um, I gained a lot of friends that are still friends today. Mm -hmm. uh, I gained a lot of experience uh, in, terms of, in terms of my musical theory, mm -hmm. you know, um, so I won't say it was in vain. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. I wouldn't say that. I, I really, um, I really gained a lot from it, honestly. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I want to actually kind of go on from that. Actually, talk about your production again and your composing, because like you said, it's kind sure. of world music. Do you have mm -hmm. any kind of favorite tracks that you performed and made so far? Mm. All right, so there's um, a track by Alternative Quartet called "One Family," mm -hmm. which I uh, which I compose the strings, mm -hmm. and actually that is the first string quarter to ever be featured on a soca rhythm really in the world <laughs> right ever <laughs> ever ever the first string you can check it out on youtube that was like a, a, a big thing and how that came about you know was is was really funny because uh the producer of that rhythm you know he's a, a really famous producer in the caribbean mm -hmm. you know he kept playing it for me you know just yeah. he's it you know i we just drive around and you play it and you be like, hey, listen to this this person's uh, song and it, listen to that person's song and it. then we listen to the beat itself. Mm -hmm. and this melody kept in my head. And I'm like, I'm like, yo, this, <laughs> this 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 is haunting me. So I, I had a performance in, in Martinique mm -hmm. and oh, that was that was a drag. That yeah, that whole week was a drag. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God I, I carried my mini piano, yeah. you know, and my laptop and so forth. And I, I revisited that song and I started to compose an entire uh, score for a quartet. Amazing. First violin, second violin, viola, cello. Mm -hmm. And I sent it to him. And he's like, wow, this is genius. Yeah. <laughs> so we got included in the cast for that rhythm and... And that was it. So that, to answer your question, that was one of my favorite yeah. pieces, One Family. And I'm actually releasing another single of mine next month. It's called In This Moment. That that has the more world fusion on it. That mm -hmm. actually is one of my favorite also. But you hear it when it, when it comes out. Oh, I can't wait to hear that. I can't wait. Yeah, um, it, it's, yeah it's great. Yeah. Like, I still can't get my, like, I'm still so... I still love the soca and classical mix, though, because it's so different. I mean, yeah. I think we brought this up before, actually, about how, what, what kind of drew you to classical music in the first place, because it is so different to that soca sound. I mean, what kind of drew you originally to classical music as well? My violin teacher at the time, he was the concert master of the National Orchestra. Mm. And... You know, I I I learned via the uh, Suzuki method. Mm -hmm. All right, mm -hmm. and um, when I was 14, 14 or thirteen, somewhere around there, early teens, he invited me to one of the orchestra rehearsals. You know, so mm -hmm. from there, I really started. To, it was like a whole new world for me. It's like <laughs> yeah. wow, you know, because yeah, I'm learning my little beginner pieces and so forth you know what um when i got into that that new way of of life it was really cool for me i met new friends there and um so that's how i i really got the storage classical training mm -hmm. you know and then we had some tutors who would come from venezuela yeah every summer to do a workshop you know and um i entered some music festivals and so forth so 
that's how I really got in, 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 engulfed into that uh, side of things, the classical. Yeah. But me being from the Caribbean, me being from Trinidad, also appreciating my culture, mm-hmm. you know, I, I decided, you know what, let me try something here. Let me, let me try and fuse the two. Yeah. And it, it worked. It does. It really does. Because obviously, watching watch again, listening to your work is incredible. And Thank you. My pleasure. And what are kind of some of the most difficult things you have to go through to make sure that both worlds kind of come together really well? Because, like we said, they, they are so different from each other. What are sort of the biggest challenges you have to face to make sure that both worlds really match with each other? Yeah, it's, it's a delicate balance mm. because. Uh, the classical and the soca music, of course, two different genres. So what I try to do is create a, how to put it, an equilibrium mm-hmm. within the 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 the, the 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 musical grain of 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 the final piece that I'm I'm trying to create. Mm-hmm. So for example, you know you have a a, a soca beat, bam bam. Mm-hmm. Bam, and then classical has a lot of country melodies and so forth. So I have yeah. to find the spaces, you know, in, 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 in between the music and the classical, you know, where it could, it could uh, how should I put it, complement each other. Mm-hmm. So I don't want to do too much, but I don't want to do too little. Yeah. Because, you know, sometimes when you do too much, it just becomes noise. Of course. You know, so you have to find a way to really balance it too. Mm-hmm. So that's how I go about it. I, I really try to feel the music and, and, and see how best I can infuse the, the two genres. Of course. To really make sense of it. Mm. And obviously, obviously, it really works. So keep up the amazing work, honestly. Thank you. Pleasure. Mm-hmm. And earlier you said you mentioned that you got to perform for the Queen of England. Yes. I mean, what was that like? <laughs> oh, that was, that was cool. So <laughs> at that time, Trinidad and Tobago hosted the Summit of the Americas. That was in 2009, I mm-hmm. believe. So we had to play for the, the, the private dinner for all the heads of state. Mm-hmm. So President Obama was in that dinner too at the time. <laughs> yeah. And back then, he was like a big thing because he just became president of yeah. the United States. It's like the first year. <laughs> so you know, they, they, yeah. they frock us. And stuff. So um, we, we performed for that um dinner and after the dinner you know everyone had to line up at the corridor after for them to leave and she she passed by and she shook our hands and she picked up my violin because my violin is the electric mm-hmm. and she's like she's like where's the rest of it <laughs> you know <laughs> and then we just laughed you know it was, yeah it was, yeah yeah it was it was nostalgic it was cool that's uh, so good to hear. That's so good. Yeah. Is that for you one of your f- favorite performances that you've done? Um, it's one of the mem- memorable ones. Mm-hmm. You know, um, St. Lucia Jazz for me was 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 that was big. Yeah. Because um, we performed that night with uh, reggae artist Barrington Levy. Mm-hmm. We actually opened the show that night. You know, and um, that was actually at the time one of the biggest stages that I, I I performed at, and it was a great experience because I actually got to uh, bring one of the local students from the uh, local orchestra mm. to perform a song with us, and that wow. was impromptu, and that was actually one of the, one of the best moments of our set. You know. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so it was really a really memorable experience. Oh, yeah, yeah, because yeah. I'm so glad you mentioned the student thing actually as well. Because uh, looking through your EPK, that one of your dream things is to open up your own scholarship, isn't it? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So yeah. I'd love to kind of find out more about that. So, what made you want to create your own scholarship in the end? Okay, because I'm 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 really passionate about excelling the, the 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 classical fraternity in Trinidad and Tobago. Mm-hmm. You know, because we have a lot of talent here. A lot of talent. Mm. You know, just a matter of us getting that opportunity to really, you know, uh, excel abroad. What 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 
got that ball rolling for me was the fact that I was uh, accepted to Berkeley wow. School of Music, yeah, to yeah. do uh, pre, the pre-degree summer workshop. Mm. But it, at that time, it was costing around 50,000 US. You know, and wow. I, I could not have afforded it at the time. And, um, you know, I tried to get help via bursaries and so forth, but it, it didn't work because at that time, mm, violin in Trinidad, classical music in Trinidad wasn't really a, a, a big thing. Mm. You know, so I, I guess I, I, I would have been overlooked. You know, and I, I didn't get the opportunity. Yeah. You know, um, so for me, I would like to implement, you know, a bursary system whereby students could get that opportunity mm. to excel, you know, yeah. in, 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 in that uh, realm of music so, it, so that they can come back to Trinidad and really uh, help with with the development of uh, of our music, yeah. yeah. I, I think that's unbelievable. Honestly, to be able to help the youth and the future generations do music is yeah something yeah. I find incredibly inspirational. And I've, and I've been wanting to do myself for years as well to open up my own school, but that is incredible. And I wish you all the very best of luck with that. Honestly, it's, it'll be yeah, so fine. good. Yes, it will. It will. It will. It will. You know, and when we leave this earth, you know. Um, we should have left a legacy of course or made it you know or find a way to to help yeah yeah 100 percent, 100 100 i wish you all the very best of luck with that man honestly you deserve it right. and before we go though the last sort of question i love to ask my my guest is some of the best lessons that they've learned in their journey so far so for you what have been some of your best lessons that you learned in your journey so far best lesson in my journey uh yeah Nothing happens before it's time, mm -hmm. and you must always enjoy the process mm. of learning. All right, and yeah. you're never too old to learn. Yes, there's always something to learn every <laughs> uh -huh. single day. Every single day, <laughs> so true. You know, that's what I've learned within throughout my journey. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely love that. That's the perfect way to end it. But, Mr. Donadoni. Andre Donawa, it's an absolute pleasure to talk to you, sir. Honestly, thank you so much for being a part of this amazing episode with me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. And best luck with everything in the future. And thank you. You my too. Pleasure. Thank you. And take care, everyone. Bye bye.